Yo, it's another Speak on the episode. It's your boy, Akil. Um, it's been a while. I know today got a special guest, my boy, Max. How's it been, bro? Good, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Always. I did I did a podcast with Max before. We touched on more so basketball and his career at Arizona, but today we'll be talking about um, more just what's been going on in the world and just what we've been um, focused on with our next chapter of our lives. So what what have you been focused on, man, just with quarantine going on, trying to stay sane during this time? What you been up to? Man, just just trying to stay creative, you know, trying to stay busy, as busy as I can be. Right. You know, nobody's really doing much right now, mm -hmm. but uh, just trying to take it for what it is, because yeah. I know we'll probably never have a time like this again. Exactly. So just and trying to enjoy it, man. Exactly. And then with the pandemic going on and with all the, you know, the social injustice and and everything that's going on, it's a crazy time. Yeah. Um, I feel like it is a crucial time for us as, you know, young black individuals to to continue to bring awareness and shed light on some of the issues that, that we're seeing um, through social media and our news outlets. So, obviously, you know, the big one right now is Breonna Taylor and how, you know, justice has not been served yet. Mm -hmm. And I just want to continue to shed light and, and say that, yeah, like, what, <laughs> what went down, that, that just isn't right. And... The three police officers need to be held accountable and, and arrested at this point. No doubt. Um, and also just LeBron. Let's talk about LeBron a little bit. And not LeBron on the court, but off the court. Yeah. And how big he is and how influential he is. And how um, the NBA guys have been able to speak up um, throughout this time on, you know, these issues. Like, how do you feel about the NBA coming back? I mean, just as a basketball fan, like, I'm obviously excited. Exactly. Um, I was tapped into the games these last two days yes ain't been nothing on tv so it's been pretty dope just right. to, to watch guys get out there exactly man i'm like it's, it's it's been a minute like you said and with the you know the cancellation and of the college basketball season as well mm -hmm. i know you missed out on an opportunity to go to the tournament again potentially and everything so yeah. uh, i understand that but yeah with the nba coming back it's it's a great time i mean i think it obviously gives us another source of entertainment right now, which mm -hmm. we all need. I mean, we need it. Bad. Uh, <laughs> ain't much else to do. I mean, yeah, yeah, people, we can sit and say we're focused on ourselves right now and, you know, creativity and whatnot, but we, you you don't want to be too over overconsumed into anything, I mm -hmm. feel like. So it's important that we're, you know, able to uh, get another source of, of entertainment right now. And I yeah. just want to, you know, give credit to the NBA guys that are continuing to shed light on these issues like Tobias Harris did the other day. and. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Grant did the same thing and I know that was why I wanted the NBA to come back because they have such a big platform mm -hmm. and they can continue to to speak up on these issues right I mean LeBron hit it on the head yesterday I Ooh. mean like like he kind of always does mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons he's in my eyes the greatest you know it's so much bigger than just basketball it's so much bigger always has been and, and for LeBron like like always will be right and I think one of the things that he said yesterday was just like at the end of the day, it's kind of simple, you know, mm -hmm. right versus wrong. Was mm -hmm. right is right, was wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just comes down to that. Like, yeah. just treat everybody fair. It's not, exactly. that, it's not that damn hard. And and we learn it at a young age. That starts from parenting. Yeah. Like, you know what's right and what's wrong. And you get disciplined because of that. You know, your parents put you in your place mm -hmm. and tell you, like, yo, that's not cool. Yo, that's disrespectful. Right. Like, that's not how we moving. Like, we're going to be better than that. So, like you said, I think I got the quote that you're talking about yesterday. He said... A lot of people use this analogy that Black Lives Matter is a movement. It's not a movement. When you're black, it's not a movement. It's a lifestyle, he said. This is a walk of life. I don't like the word movement because, unfortunately, in America, in society, there ain't been no damn movement for us. And like Whatsoever. you said, bro, hit it right on the head. And that's why I want to continue to, you know, give kudos to LeBron because yeah. us, you know, we just finished our collegiate careers. And being young, black, you know, student athletes, and we're so cherished uh, within our sport, but people don't understand, like, yeah, we get all the the accolades and attention, but as soon as we step off that court, it's back to reality. Yeah, it's you're just a black man, you know? For real. It's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, But I think it's just something that we've all, you know, kind of grown accustomed to. Right. And that was the dopest thing about LeBron yesterday was just saying, like, you know, if the average person has to take five steps, we got to take ten. Correct. And that's just kind of what it is. It's kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. It's created that hustle on all of us. Exactly. It's created that, you know, go get it kind of mentality for the majority of African Americans. So. <laughs> Facts, bro. It's like we got we got to work twice as hard to yeah. get to where we want to be. You know, right. 
uh, to be successful, you know, we gotta we gotta continue to uh, break barriers. No doubt. Um, and I think a barrier that you know we're continuing to breaking is you know graduating from college because people have so people have so such low standards for yeah. African Americans. And as we continue to progress and grow and shed light on everything, I think that change change will definitely happen. No you know, one day. Uh, do you Hopefully. have? Yeah, for real. <laughs> Hopefully, man. Do you have any experiences that you could shed light on? Just being a young black African American on a college campus and really being that minority, like within classrooms, social yeah. settings. I mean, I've just I've grown so used to it. You know, mm-hmm. I've gone to private school. I was fortunate enough to go to private school my whole life, mm-hmm. so I've just kind of always been a minority correct almost to the point where like i didn't even think much of it Mm -hmm. you know um but i think you know for me for for guys like us it's a little bit different because you know we could quote unquote turn it on turn it off like hey i know what room i'm walking into and and what voice i gotta put on Mm -hmm. and and how to act Mm -hmm. quote unquote so yes maybe you know a little bit unfortunate but correct somewhere used to that's like 100% correct. I'm glad you said that because we know how to turn it on and off. Like, we know when we need to adjust to whatever setting we're in. Right. Whether it's applying for a job in a college classroom, at a party. Like, we know how to turn it on and off no matter what group of people are around. Right. And I think the fact that we did play basketball for so many years growing up, that all that also taught us how to work with different individuals. No doubt. Um, different races, you know, different people and, and what they like and what they don't like. And even – you know, adjusting to being coached by yeah. different individuals because yeah. it's so different. And you're not gonna like them half the time, bro. Half the time Most you're not. Time. For real, all, all the time. <laughs> For real, depending on the coach, like you might not ever like them. Yeah. And and that's why like, a lot of kids transfer around these days too because right. it's like, <laughs> at the end of the day, university gonna sell you a dream to get you to get you there in the first place. But as soon as you get on that campus, oh yeah, it's quiet. They, they could do whatever they want. Yeah, you, you're looking at a, a firsthand experience there. Right. Right. Speak on your experience, though, just a little bit at, at, Arizona, at Arizona this past year for me. Um, just overall. Yeah, I mean, o- overall, it was it was a roller coaster, you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess, as life is. Right. It was it was filled with, with moments that I'll never forget, mm-hmm. good and bad. So I'm grateful for, obviously, the opportunity. I'm grateful I went there. I'm grateful, you know, yep. for all the relationships that I made. Exactly. Where, you know, it was Coach Miller and all the way down. Mm-hmm. You know, people that I'll – be tapped in with for the rest of my life right um and just from a networking standpoint like arizona has one of the, the biggest networks right in, in the entertainment industry yep. um so it was great to kind of have that i obviously love my time at uci right um close to my heart forever so yep i, I had a great college experience at the end of the day man mm-hmm. I, I really did and that's what I, I think a lot of people gotta learn to take from it like it's all about networking and, and, and speaking to people and learning how to communicate um, cause people can put you in, in some really good, you know, opportunities, yeah. you know, after college. And that's what you want. Like, especially if you have plans aside from basketball, you, you want to be able to step aside and know, like you got some sort of direction. Right. Um, and as far as I want to just shed light on, uh, individuals and, and going to universities and it don't really matter, honestly, D1, D2, NAIA, like mm-hmm. get your education paid for, man. No doubt. Basketball it's it's, it's always going to be there. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the same. Um, obviously, yeah, the Blue Bloods. Like, you got pros. You got the little percent that's pros, but you got a whole lot of dudes that's overseas are going right. to be done with it. So yeah. take it for what it is and, you know, get your education paid for it and then take, you know, advantage of whatever opportunities present themselves afterwards. No doubt. Um, that's all I got to say about it at this point, dealing with the injuries and stuff that I did. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's that's the best way to go about it. Um I know you're working on the, um, a clothing line right now, right? Yeah. You, you're done with school. Um, what what direction do you see yourself going in with that? And and what made you want to, you know, really pursue and, and start your own business, I would say? Yeah. Well, I guess, like, maybe it was my sophomore year at UCI. Mm-hmm. I was just, like, that was kind of when, you know, Tunnel Picks was becoming a thing. That was okay. kind of when guys, at least at that age, were, were starting to be more in tune with, like, what they're wearing. Mm-hmm. And, uh I don't know. I was just trying to make some tees for myself. For Got like you. A couple of friends just because, like, I want certain things on T-shirts. Correct. Um, you know, you kind of fast forward a couple of my friends, Warm, Stanley, Johnson, Warm. Mm-hmm. And I, I sold a couple. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I could and do this. Yeah, I, I could kind of do this. And, 
you know, the NCA, you're not really allowed to use your, your name, your image, or your right. likeness to promote any business, whether it's your own or, or another business. So Correct. I kind of had, a, you know, that hurdle throughout college, hadn't really been able to to do it or pursue it like I wanted to. Right. Um, and now you kind of fast forward to now, it's kind of like a perfect storm with mm-hmm. nobody hiring anyway. Right. Um, all I'm doing is chilling at the house. Mm-hmm. So it's a great time to be creative. It's something that I've always right wanted to do and know I could do. Right. And uh, it, it's bigger than it's bigger than clothes. You know, it's bigger than T-shirts. Like I'm trying to build a brand. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to. I, I love to like potentially be complex one day. And right. Know, host festivals. Yep. Have artists have. Mm-hmm. It's always about the bigger picture, yeah, bro. Yeah, so it's always about the bigger picture. T-shirts is just hopefully gonna get me in the door. Exactly, it's just a start. It's yeah, just a start. Yeah. And it kind of what we spoke on earlier, and how we can just continue now to just focus on self. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when you have your business, you're working on your own time. Yeah. You know, you 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 put your business in a direction for it to be successful. You're not relying on anyone else. Well, you are relying on somebody because you're going to obviously have a team right. um, that you're going to rely on, but you're your own boss, yeah. basically, and, and you're making sure your team, you know, aligns up with your goals to get right. you where you want to go. So that's big. And I think us as, you know, young, what, 22, 23, mm-hmm. um, having some sort of business right now is is key Yeah. because ultimately you don't want to have to, you know, work for anybody, you know? Yeah. So, oh, you know, Got a veto in the, in the I- <laughs> scene, man. He can't get some. pulled up. He coming back too. Coming get some podcast talk. <laughs> <laughs> but it's big, you know. We're young, and you know, like you have a business. Um, not many people can say that. Right. Um, talk about some of the advantages of having that right now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the biggest thing for anybody who whether wants to start a business, start a brand, it's just like you got to do it. You got and, to. And you just gotta kind of put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I've been putting myself out there forever, just uh-huh. by you know playing basketball, playing the way I play. It's right. just like I don't really give a damn. Yeah, so. <laughs> for real. So talk about some of the hurdles you have to overcome. I know you just spoke on how dealing with the NCAA mm-hmm. and how you haven't really been able to promote it or really yeah. put your whole foot in it like you wanted to previously. But any hurdles recently, just with the COVID right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think the biggest thing in terms of hurdles was like I wasn't allowed to really put my name behind my brand ever mm-hmm. right until i was no longer part of the ncaa which is like three four months ago correct yeah um, what you want yeah that's it's true. like trial and error it, literally so literally. and i've trust me i've had a multitude of errors and i know i'm only gonna have more but that's mm-hmm. how you learn you know yep and anything with anything in life yeah. you got to go through trial and error and you got to be consistent kind of what we touched on while we were working out no today doubt. consistency how it's so key um because i know there's a lot of people our age that are that are trying to you know get into owning their own business mm-hmm. and they might not see the bigger picture in the moment because right. they might not be making a certain amount of money from it or profiting as much as they want to but continue to stay consistent because you just never know when it might hit mm-hmm. um yeah and, and i was talking to my grandma last night and she touched on something that will f- forever stick with me she was just like you gotta figure out what success looks like for you mm-hmm. like success is different for everybody Correct. for some people maybe a hundred thousand dollars for other people it may be materialistic stuff you know selling 20 shorts mm-hmm. selling 40 shirts mm-hmm. like what does success look like for you hey, that's right if you don't know what success looks like for you you're always going to be chasing something so. yes yes and and, and that's kind of everybody been asking me like how do you stay consistent with working out it's like you got to have goals mm-hmm. because if you're just working to work then you never see the pro any right. progress and you might burn out right and i feel like that's been the weirdest thing about quarantine for a lot of people it's mm-hmm. like it's really hard there's nothing really, I guess, quote unquote, to like measure. Mm-hmm. You know, like Tuesday, I don't really have much to do. Wednesday, Correct. I don't have anything much to do. You can almost get lost in the days <laughs> yes. if you're not like setting goals. Correct. If you're not trying to, you know, making certain things like, okay, by Wednesday, I got to get this done. Thursday, I got to get this done. You yep. can get lost, you know? So Bro, you gotta, for real. You got to kind of have something you're trying to mm-hmm. trying to. I was telling you, every day, damn near feel the same. Man. Um, I don't even know what day it is right now. Shit, what is it? Uh, Thursday? Oh, it's Friday. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's Friday, but the whole Friday, like I said, Friday through Monday for like the whole weekend. Man. And like you just said, set, I feel like people our age really set goals day to day. Um, and whatever yeah. you're doing, like you might not have a business, but if it's just working out or reading a book, continue to educate. Like, dude, there's so many things we can do. And I think we yeah. get caught up a lot at this time as we're, we're bored. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, like my mom said, I call her on board. She's like, go read a book. 
Yeah. Like you never too old to read a book. You never too old to edu- continue to, to educate learn, yourself. Yeah. You know. So continue. I think we need to continue to all to do that during this time. Facts. Um, what has it done for you as far as family time? I know we missed some crucial years. You know. Right. Um, the last four or five years just dealing with college and family time. And I know quarantine for me has really gave me the opportunity to grow closer to, to people in my family, mm-hmm. um, especially my parents. I was already close to my parents, but just, you know, being able to spend that quality time, it's yeah. just something you just really can't get back. Yeah. Um, so what has it done for you? It's been, it's been dope. I mean, I haven't been home like this since high school. Right. Um, and even when I was in high school, like I'm at school all day. I got practice. Mm-hmm. It's just like I'm a little bit isolated quote unquote for my fam. Yeah. So it's been dope to have, you know, dinners every night with my parents. Right. It's been dope to watch T V mm-hmm. with my parents. We'd be watching Family Feud every night. Okay. Just, and just laughing at yeah. ignorant people. So it's been dope. It's been really fun. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying it. And uh I know it means something to them that I'm yeah. home as well. So exactly. My mom always called me every day. I miss you, son. When <laughs> you coming home. So like I, I know, man. They they really chase, especially if they're getting older, man. I'm starting to realize that Weird. too. Like I'm getting older too. Y'all are, man. It's in another way, I was thinking about this earlier. Was like, damn, I'm not hooping no more. Like, right. I'm actually not playing basketball anymore. Like, those days are actually over. Over. So, mm-hmm. you just gotta kind of en- you gotta soak it all in. And yep. Enjoy it just all. like I was telling you, bro, focus on Max. Do Max. Yeah. Like, it, it was we had to please so many people previous years of our life right. of our lives. Um, like I said, coaches, teammates, institutions. And now you can solely just focus on self, and, yeah. and you're going to see the growth, man. It's going to be beautiful, and you're going to really cherish it. You're going to be like, damn, like, yeah, yeah. this is what i kind of been missing. Like, obviously, yeah, we love basketball in the moment. Right. And, but sometimes, you know, it's yeah, got to continue. That's the thing with, with basketball, too. Like, I, we all, for the most part, have been playing. <laughs> Since, ever. bro, bro, bro I forever. Can't even, I couldn't even tell you when I started playing. <laughs> yeah. So, like, and I've, I'm happy with the way my basketball career went mm-hmm. from, you know, elementary school to college. So I'm content, man. Yeah, I feel like I did it like as much as I miss exactly know, scoring and stuff. Yeah, I don't miss it like that. Exactly, you know? that's where I was at. I'm like, I, I it was like maybe a month, and I'm like, do I really miss playing? And yeah. I'm like, I don't really I miss think the good moments. Sure, mm-hmm. I miss making a big mm-hmm. shot or two, right? Because we were all the man on at, at one once yeah. upon a time. We were all role players at once upon a time. Yeah. So we know the levels, the levels to it, like. And that's what a lot of inv- individuals don't understand. Like everybody always want to be the man. Never, right. never thought about buying into a role. Right. And it's like you sacrifice that just for the greater good. Yeah. Sometimes, and yeah, sometimes it it, it hurts because you know you you better than than what you might be given the opportunity of. Right. But like I said, you got to be able to adjust and adapt in any you know any aspect of life. And I think that's yeah. why basketball is so pivotal it's to the us. Best teacher, you mm-hmm. know, there's no better. There's no better teacher. For exactly. You. you could take it and put that same passion, like I was saying earlier into into something else um as far as like working out and stuff um people had questions for me and working out and like Mm -hmm. consistency and stuff i know you said it's been probably like a week for you um but i think working out is just it's kind of like basketball it's kind of like you holding yourself accountable like you you see the progress and you take the time out when you want to see progression and you know get stronger mentally physically and the mental aspect of working out is so big though Mm -hmm. Because I know when I'm working out, I don't think of nothing else. I'm in the moment. Um, and there's a million things going on right, right now, man. And if you're on social media and stuff like that, too, it's kind of like um, it's it's almost too much. Yeah, you can get lost. You can get lost. So I think it's important right now to, you know, work out and do other things that, that will continue to, um, you know, free your mind yeah. from everything it's that's going on. It's the best therapy. You know, yeah. There's no better therapy than, than getting a real good sweat in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the questions somebody had for me, he said, what are the tips on staying consistent and working on And also, how do you set goals and what type of goal setting works best for you? Mm. Mm. Tips on, I think, like I said, consistency is all just holding yourself accountable. So some tips. Yeah. Create goals um, week in and week out, whether it's to gain some weight, to add mass, or whatever it is. But something that's so pivotal in, in working out is eating right. right. Like people don't understand that. Like, yeah, you can go lift however many weights you want, but you're not going to see the progress that you want if, you, if you're not eating right. right. And obviously, there's you know vegan, pescatarian, vegetarian. There's so many. Yeah, there's so many ways to go about it. And people say, yeah, eating meat is bad and all this stuff. But I feel like. Anything in moderation is right. good. 
Exactly. Anything in moderation is I, good. I've always struggled with my food intake. Mm-hmm. I, I eat. As far as like I'm, calories? I'm just a foodie. Okay. Like, I love food. Mm-hmm. You know, food is, that's my go-to. <laughs> yeah. here. I, I can name a million spots that, that sound good to me right now. Oh, so, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've always kind of struggled with the with the diet thing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I'm fine. Physically, I, I got exactly, decent yeah. genes, but uh-huh. I definitely, as I get older, I'm not working out as much. Mm-hmm. I got to, I got to chill on the burgers and the fries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know my mom. She really be pushing me like, "Oh, why aren't you vegan yet? Like, what are you waiting Girl. on?" Yeah, because she's been. My mom's been a vegan. How how long my mom been vegan yet? It's years, right? Some a good amount of time. So she's always pushing me, and and I do eat the vegan food, and it's actually good. Yeah. I can't. It's it's good. Um, but I don't think I'm financially able to really. Go to the grocery store and continue right. to eat vegan and, and be consistent with it yet. I think later on in life, honestly, I will become right. vegan. Um, I already don't eat a lot of meat as is. But like I said, set goals as far as working out. Have something to look forward to and, and make sure you're you're eating the right stuff. Right. Um, as far as unity in the community, um, just from sports, uh, friends, why do you think it's so important for you know people to continue to support each other and you know, you know, build a team to, you know, really, you know, um, I guess build like you said. It's, it's like you said, it's, it's bigger than the clothing line. Yeah. Something big like an empire. Right. So what 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 makes that so important to you? I I, I think it's just a collective thing in general. I mm-hmm. think being creative is a collective experience. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you're you're making music, whether you're doing a podcast, right. Whether you're making you know clothing, mm-hmm. I think being around people who are doing similar things. Yeah. Being around people. Who creative mm-hmm. is only gonna you know bring out the best thing exactly like basketball. Mm-hmm. and that's why i'll be telling kai because like our friend group they they love basketball they're just caught up in really basketball for the right. most part and kai hangs out with a lot of creators mm-hmm. so like to be able to bounce off ideas is is so beautiful because yeah. like you know like you might be thinking one thing and your homie could tell you another thing and your other homie could tell you one thing and it's just like an ongoing process and now you got something big you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Either, whether it's together whether it's for yourself like mm-hmm. you can just learn so much from, right from other people yeah so that's why i always when i'm when i'm thinking about doing something i'm always hitting kai like bro what you think because yeah. i know his he he he, he sees it. yeah like we on the same wavelengths mm-hmm. all the time yeah he gets it yeah sure. bro come on kai come over here real quick man I gotta give Kai a shout out, man, with these shorts. No, the shorts, the shorts are bro. Perfect. The short, the perfect shorts. The shorts are fire, man. Kai got the Katana Studios here, man. Talk, talk your stuff, man. Instagram, what's your Instagram and everything? <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, you just follow the Instagram Katana Studios. I mean, that's all I gotta say. Best, the best shorts in the game. Hey, hey, the shorts are fire. I mean, you see them for yourself. You got a couple. You got a couple more drops coming out within the next couple months. Y'all see what's just, coming just out. Stay tapped in. Yeah, stay tapped in. And then we got to speak on Max, man. Go ahead, shout out your your brand, your Instagram for it. You, I know you already said it, but but yeah, really get yeah. the people. Yeah, you, you can follow me on Instagram at Brand Scene, mm-hmm. and my Instagram is just at Max Hazard. Yep. And Max got some dope stuff too. It's it's should, it's a lot of athletic type stuff. I bought your last little shirt too. You know, Mel, every time I see y'all drop. Y'all too, man. I'm I'm gonna buy it. Like, love, that's that's what it's Support all about. Your friends, damn it, bro. For real, <laughs> like people be out here like uh, hating. They, people be hating. They you really know, do, and, and bro. It's crazy, man. Like after a couple drops, after a couple successful drops, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, now my friends want to buy stuff. Like, oh. I almost, I almost might not sell to y'all. <laughs> almost, <laughs> bro. Not. Like for real, like you. Hype, it's the hype machine. Yeah, it's like you. I shouldn't have to have a hundred other people buy it before you tap in. It's like you've been there from the jump. Like you know what I'm about. Like you should have. It's just like it's just like everything now. We had, I had to wake him up and hoop too. So hey, for real though, everything is about who getting the most attention at the time and yeah. the hype at the time. Yeah. And that takes away from a lot of things, man. Because stuff be so beautiful from the jump, and and mm-hmm. people then cherish it once a million people right. following it. Right. Um, right. But like I said, two dope brands, LA based. I mean, it gets no better. Yeah, uh, they want to come up. They young, young designers too. So it's like support it, black businesses too. Damn it. Hey, for real, support mm-hmm. black business. By the way, just as just because Max said that, don't forget check out bamstherapeutic dot com for self care products like bath salts and body scrubs. And I got a code for y'all. Hit me for the code. It's my mom's. Um, yeah. What's it, massage? What's it, essential oils? It's a whole bunch of stuff. I got it all. Yeah, yeah I mess it up every time. But my mom's a massa- massage therapist, and I know it's been hard for them to really get people massages just because of COVID stuff. Mm. So that's the least you could do is, you know, buy some of her products, support black business, like Max said. 
and you know, so you know, support each other, man. Don't don't be out here hating during this crazy time. Um, Thanks. it's crazy though too because you know how not everybody is kind of on Instagram like black business, black business, mm-hmm. black business. Like a, we should have been a cost, and and as sad as that sounds, it's just like damn. Um, but yeah, continue to shed light on these, you know, on these things too, and bring awareness to social injustice, man. Have these conversations. Yeah. Don't matter what race you are, be comfortable. And and there's there's nothing wrong with being wrong or like having a having a a different opinion than others. But as long you as you can communicate that, I feel like that's what's important. I think that's what LeBron said too, or somebody said how commu- Oh yeah, LeBron said it. How communication, like having a disagreement about stuff, like that's fine. Yeah, as long as you're comfortable having the the conversation in the right. in the first place, that goes a long way. Yeah, and I think when LeBron was was touching on that. I mean, he hits the head. He hits it on the head every time. Mm-hmm. But what is there to really disagree about? I think that's kind of what it comes down to. Like, right? Our country is just honestly. I'm not a politician, but it's I'm just kind of built on racism. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, some people are going to be racist. That's just kind of what it is. Yeah. Just like some people are going to be murderers. Just like some people are going to be uh, yep. going to be drug addicts. There's always going to yeah kind of be those. And people. it starts at the top. But they just can't be the people in power. Facts. You know. Facts. And let's just get a, a president who's qualified and can speak in full sentence yes <laughs> for real and it starts at the top man and and that's why it's sad because our leader per se is is, is racist himself you know he not he's not about the people you're not about the people but also too it's just like what are you saying right like i don't even understand what mm-hmm. you're saying people are asking you questions you can't even articulate full thoughts mm-hmm. it's like how you're actually president <laughs> Yes, I just I it's a joke, man. He tweets know. like it's it's a joke. Yeah, I think we would be better presidents. It's, right. it's almost laughable at this point. Like it, it's yeah, not. I mean, look at us. If you're looking at us as a country outside looking in, mm-hmm. we don't look too, we don't look too hot. We don't look good at all. Yeah, we don't the other countries are probably laughing like like look at them over there. Look at them fools over there. <laughs> like that shit don't make no sense. LeBron twenty 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 four. Yeah, yeah, for real. LeBron James twenty twenty. LeBron James, why not? If he's not gonna be hooping, why not? I vote for him. For real. Um, let's take a break into action real quick. Yep. All right, we got some hot seat questions for Max. Here we go. So, relationship status. Oh, you're asking me? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, man, I'm just figuring it out. I'm, I'm figuring it out. Respectable. You know, That's respectable. Twenty. If, if there was $20 million hanging off a cliff or the, or the love of your life, which one would you save? The love of my life. Mm. Why? Because I'm gonna make twenty million. Mm. Speak on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 all right. Would you rather lose all your money and valuables, or all the pictures you have ever taken? Mm. Wow, that's a good one. Mm. I want to lose. I gotta lose the. Uh, Damn, the valuables. You got to lose all your money and valuables or all the pictures you've ever taken. Uh, The pictures got to go. I I just got to take some more with my my iPad. (laughs) (laughs) You got to take some more next time. For real. All right. Would you rather have everything on your phone right now Mm -hmm. made public to anyone who searches your name or never use a cell phone again? Y'all can have my phone. Ain't nothing that, that crazy. He said, ain't nothing uh, that crazy. Y'all can have a phone to the public. Max has his iPhone to the public. Ain't nothing that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be feared by all or loved by all? Um, loved. I, I think the fear factor thing is a little bit overrated. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and I think it goes you know, a, a certain, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. You know? If someone's, quote unquote, fearful of you, you know. They'll be on their P's and Q's to a certain extent, but mm-hmm. here comes stuff behind your back. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. People love you, they're not going to do nothing behind your back. Facts. For sure. Would you rather lose all of your memories from birth till now or lose your ability to make new long-term memories? Damn. I, I guess the first one. I don't want to, like, wish dementia or, like, Alzheimer's on me. Okay. So I'm going to go with that. So you would rather lose all your memories from birth till now? Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I want to be able to still create my memories, I guess. I feel like these are going to be the most, the best memories. We're just getting started. The best memories are yet to come. We're just getting started. Bro, for real. Like, this is when, you know, the adulting happens yeah. and you find. Dude, it's weird because, like, we don't even know what's to come. <laughs> we don't. Obviously. 
I see no think about it, I crazy. see no light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Like I am sitting here and I'm asking people like, yo, like when do you think quarantine might be over? It's like I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't even know what twenty three is supposed to feel like. like right? It's an interesting age. Bro, talk about that. We well you graduate, you got to celebrate graduation, but mm-hmm. then you just got your masters, correct? Yeah. So me, I just graduated. I didn't get to take no grab pics. Ooh. I didn't get to ro- walk across no stage. Like ah. I didn't get to have no grab party. Yeah, like that's tough. I ain't gonna lie, that's tough. Right? Like, I didn't I get to th- celebrate like I wanted to. I didn't get to celebrate twenty three like I wanted to. Twenty four gonna have to be a movie. Twenty four gonna be a movie for sure. Twenty four gonna have to be a movie, man. You know, and we all know you graduated. You feel me? That's all that matters, man. Yeah. That's all that matters. But that concludes another speak on the episode. I just want to say again. Appreciate you, Max, man. Uh, shout out, Kai. Go get you some shorts. Get Katana shorts. Studios, Don't man. Get sold out, though. You can't get them right now. Yeah, go get the next one. <laughs> the next drop, man. The next next couple months. Brand C. Check out Max, man. It's it's some dope stuff. And don't forget, you know, buy some some bear, some Bams Therapeutic. Um, what's my mom's Instagram? At Bams Massage something. Yeah, you gotta get that. Down. I know. It's she on my gonna, iPad. I'm like, be hot. man, hold on. Let me get this down. She's gonna be looking like, look, look at this. <laughs> look at this dude doing. You gotta get that down. Here we go. Don't forget. Once again, check out bamstherapeutic.com for self-care products like bath salts and body scrubs, all right? I got a code for y'all. Come check out the gym, man. Salute to the power. We in Bellflower. I'm about to be asleep all day. After the workout, right? Damn. Good workout, man. Damn. Continue to grind, people. Continue to educate yourselves. We out. Another speaker on the episode.